uh, did Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rakakodash, double honors to my apostles and the elders of the Great Millstone. Peace and salutation to all the brothers that's doing this work in truth and in sincerity and risking their lives to do so. This is Psalms chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse 8. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Earlier I did a video about this, this but I'm going to go in a little deeper this time. I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do to you heathens. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So you're going to get beaten very severely, you know. You're going to get beaten very severely in the kingdom of heaven, which this, the kingdom is for the nation of Israel. You know, I'm going to show you a quick video that I uploaded a while, a couple of days or a couple of days back. I believe it was like two weeks ago. Um, That's a rod of iron, man. Let's see. I'm a, I'm a, um, this is, uh, Revelations 2 and 27. And he shall rule, uh, I'm, I'm gonna start at, uh, uh, 25. But that which ye have hold fast till I come. It's talking about this word, this truth, you know. And he that overcometh, talking about the elect. And keepeth my works unto the end. Also talking about the elect. To him will I give power over the nations. What nations? These heathen nations. And, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Even as I received of my father. So. The Lord. Let's Google. Let's actually look on, on YouTube and see what a rod of iron looks like. <laughs> uh, uh, some bullshit. Let's see. Rod of iron. I just want a simple picture of a rod of iron. A simple picture. That's it. Yeah, okay. Here's a rod. <laughs> Here's a, rod. a couple of rods of iron, man. You know, as you can see, it's a, a rod of iron. Literally, man. A rod of iron. And you, you people will be beaten with these, man. Here it is. Here. It's going to be a, a rod of iron. It even got the scriptures up there. <laughs> you know. Another example of a rod of iron. It says, why only <laughs> the Jews will endure them million rule of Christ because hey this is the, it's Yahweh Shai's kingdom man and he's the king of the Jews and we're going to be joint heirs the, the elect not saying I'm a part of the elect but we're not there to make ourselves to that number but I'm saying like the men that are doing this work you know Lord willing they endure you know whoever those men are that are the elect they're going to they're going to um take in part of that kingdom man they're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai you know <clears throat> 
And it's and it's very important that we bring this out. You know, the fact that you you heathens will uh you will engage in this because the payback is a bitch, man. And this is the Lord that's doing this. This is Revelation 12 and 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now, if you go in the book of Revelations or go to the breakdown of Revelation chapter 12, that child is talking about Yahweh Shah. Because <clears throat> he's the ones that's going to rule these nations with a rod of iron. And us being Israelites are going to also rule with a rod of iron. <clears throat> Revelations 19 and 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treaded the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the almighty God. Now who is the one that treaded the winepress? Let's go to uh, the book of Isaiah because it also says somebody treaded the winepress alone which we know through the spirit who is that talking about. Isaiah 63 and I'm going to start at 1. Who is this that comes from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Now, Basra is the capital of the Edomites. Wherever the Edomites at, that's where Basra is, which was right here in America, is where the bulk of the uh, mainly all you devils are at. This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. This is talking about Yahweh Shai. I am I that speak in righteousness mighty to save. You know, um, wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments than him that treadeth in wine fat? Now remember what it says, he him that treadeth in um the wine press. You know? I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I would tread them in mine anger, and trample them my them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. So raiment means like clothing. You know, so the Lord is going to beat you people so bad, it's, it's going to be blood all over him, man. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. So Yahweh Shai, who this book, hey, Yahweh Shai is all throughout this book. He said, lo, I come in the volume of the book. <clears throat> this is Psalms 47. Lo, then said I... Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. It is written about Yahweh Shai. So who is this talking about that's going to come and beat and beat people so bad that blood going to be sprinkled on his garments and he's going to have and rule the nations with a rod of iron? He, this is talking about our Lord, Yahweh Shai. You know, and Yahweh Shai said this, in the book of Luke, like Luke 19 and 27, but those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. So if you don't want to get down with the program that Yahweh Shah is going to rule this earth with a rod of iron and anybody that stands up against Yahweh Shah and his leadership and his kingdom or whatever, you're going to get beaten, man. You, you people going to get beaten real bad. You're going to get beat. You're going to get a beat down, man. From your house side servants, man. His men, the elect, man. They desire to do the will of the Lord, man. You know, if your house side tell them, his disciples to slay some people that wouldn't want them to reign over, that don't want your house side to reign over them, guess what? Them disciples going to do that, man. <clears throat> this is Micah 4 and 13. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion. So we, the Lord said he was going to make us a sharp threshing instrument with teeth. You know, so what does it mean to thresh? <laughs> Let's get this, man. We're going to thresh these people. <coughs> Speaking about the elect. It says to beat. <laughs> Beating, to thresh, to stamp loosely. Uh, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> to knock, to beat or strike. So the Lord said, arise and thresh. What thresh means to beat, O daughter of Zion. So the Lord is telling us to get up and beat these people, man. For I will make thine horn iron and I will make thy hooves brass and thou shalt beat in pieces many people. And I will consecrate their gain unto Yahweh, 
and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. <laughs> so the Lord clearly said, man, arise and thresh. The Lord said he's going to make us into a, a, a sharp threshing instrument. Now, if the word thresh means to beat, I wonder what threshing means. <laughs> uh, this is, and I enjoy this, man. I I really do enjoy this. This is this is uh fuel to, this is uh like fuel to the soul, man. You know to to have have you devils in under our authority in our hands and can do whatever the hell we want to do with you, man. It says Isaiah forty one and fifteen. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing, a new sharp beating instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh, thou shalt beat. The mountains and y'all, thou shalt thresh the mountains, which thresh means to beat. Thou shalt beat the mountains and beat them small, and shall make the hills as chaff. So let's go into Isaiah in the uh, Strong's <coughs> and look up that scripture. This this Strong's Bible is so helpful. Um, <clears throat> it can give you a quick definition. You know, it doesn't go as deep as, as the blue letter, but. You know, it scratches the surface, and that's good enough. Sometimes it makes it, it makes its point, and it makes it quick. <clears throat> okay, it says from a un unused root, meaning to tribute, tribute, a threshing sledge, a threshing instrument. <laughs> what I want a threshing sledge, a threshing instrument, a something that you beat something with. <clears throat> So that's what the Lord is going to make us into, uh, a, a weapon. The Lord is making us a weapon right now. We already a weapon used by the Lord. You know, the Lord is using us as a weapon right now. By He made our mouth a sharp sword. Let me get that. <clears throat> In the book of Isaiah, I forgot what chapter. Okay, it's uh, Isaiah 9, 49 and 2. And he... And he had made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand hath he hid me and made a poly me a polished chaff in the quiver in his quiver hath he hid me. So the Lord has already made us into an instrument. It says a long slender rod. Now remember brothers, we're going to beat these people with a rod of iron. And the scripture says he and he made me a polished shaft in his quiver hath he hid me. So the Lord has already made us is making us into a weapon, man. We are a weapon for the Lord. Uh, and if you look up the word shaft, like I just did, it says a long slender rod. <laughs> you see how these words is linking up <clears throat> to cut, to scrape, to shave, scrape, polish. <clears throat> uh, meaning a beam or ray, <laughs> an arrow. Let's see, a long narrow passage sunk in the earth. Nah, that's not what I'm looking for. Vugus sling, sense Vugus sling meaning penis first. No, not, that's not what I was looking for anyway. Either it's okay. It says a long slender rod, a pole, a spear shaft, a spear. So, as you can see, brothers, man, hey, the Lord is making us into a, a, a instrument of war, a rod of iron. We're going to be rods of iron, and we're going to be beating these people with rods of iron. The Lord right now is, has made us into a weapon, man. You know, as you read Isaiah 49 and 2, I'm going to read this one more guy, again, one more time, because this is powerful, man. And I, and I just love it. This is Isaiah 49 and 2 again. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. So our mouth is like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me and made me a polished chaff, a slender, a long slender rod. In his quiver hath he hid me. Now, what is a quiver? Let's see what that is. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's something that you can put instruments in. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, it's a quiver. Wait. <laughs> okay, it says. Okay, wait, wait, wait. 
bear with me. It says a case for holding arrows, a, a container, <laughs> a quiver. <laughs> and so the Lord has made us into an actual weapon. It says a quiver or arrow case. Yep. It says the same thing. So that right there proves, man, the Lord is making us a weapon, man. We are a weapon. And the Lord is going to use these weapons. Because the Lord ain't going to make us into weapons for no reason, man. He's going to use these weapons. Which he is he's using his weapons right now, spiritually. But very soon, let me get it. Uh, he's going to, these hunters... These uh, these fishes are gonna turn to hunters. This is uh, Jeremiah, sixteen and sixteen. Behold, I will send for many fishes, said Yahweh, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. Now, what is a hunter? Well, a huntsman. It, it really doesn't give no deep definition of hunter, which we already know what a hunter is, you know, but. <clears throat> Somebody that you actually hunts down something and kills it, you know, because if you're going hunting, you're going to kill an animal, you know, probably most likely for something to eat. But, you know, if you're a hunter, you're going basically you're not you're not a hunter is not good news. Just like a bounty hunter. <clears throat> if you see a bounty hunter, you know, that's not good news. If you see a, a person that's hunting to kill you, that's not good news. So. If you're a hunter, hunters are not you know, a pretty thing that you want to see. Just like these animals. They are hunters. They'll hunt you down and kill you. Like a lion. A, a lion will hunt you down. If you if a lion sees you, it will hunt you down and it will kill you. You know? So a, a hunter is not a good a good uh sight. <laughs> you don't want to see a hunter. And guess what? The uh, the the uh the symbol for the nation of Israel is a lion. <laughs> so we're that lion. We're those hunters, like it says in the scriptures. I will call for many hunters, and they shall hunt them. So, cause we're those lions. We're didn't it say Judah is a lion's well? <clears throat> it says these scoop, stupid low. <clears throat> Who shall rouse them up? Genesis forty nine and nine. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as a old lion, he who shall rouse him up? So we're that lion, man. We are that lion. You know, we're that hunter. We're that predator that is gonna prey upon you people. The Lord said he shall make us a predator, a basically a predator. Because a predator hunts to prey. And you devils, you, you heathens are going to be to prey. And the Lord said he's going to make you to pray. This is Jeremiah 30 and 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee will, shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. So we're going to be that predator, man. <clears throat> Not talking about like a sexual predator. I just had to put that out there because in this society, that word predator is not, it's used for something different. <clears throat> it says to rob. That's not what I'm looking for. Ooh, there we go. Up. Oh, well, it says predate. Let me see. Predator. Yeah. Well, I'm going to just use this word. It says predate to seek prey. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to seek prey. Who is going to be the prey? You devils, you heathens, these nations. The Lord said, I will and I will and I that and all that prey upon thee. Who who prays upon our people? Esau, Edom, upon thee will I give for a prey. So we're going to be that predate, man. We're, we're going to we're going to predate you devils, man. We're going to seek you. We're gonna we're gonna seek the prey. <laughs> and you're the prey. You're the you're the prey, man. <clears throat> and we're the predators. We're we're the predators and you're the prey. And we're gonna hunt you damn devils, man. So um I believe that's all that was on my spirit through um 
I believe that's it. If something else don't pop up in my head, you know, on my spirit. <clears throat> um, this is I hope you brothers was edified with this lesson, man. You know, as you can see the spirit had me going all over the place. You know. Started with a rod of iron. You know, we are that rod of iron. We are that weapon that the Lord is using. You know, and the Lord is going to use us to beat these these people to pieces, man. Like I brung out multiple times, man. So um, I hope you brothers are edified. This is, you know, I was edified just by, you know, doing this lesson, man. So with that, I'm going to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rakakodash, Kodash, double honor to my apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutation to all the brothers doing this work and truth and sincerity. Oh, Slot, let me get one more precept and I'm going to be it. Because I was gonna, I was going to get this one, <coughs> but I, I had got, you know, I thought of another precept and it drove me off on it. This is Hebrews four and twelve. For the the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You know, so this word right now is cutting you people spiritually. You know, but very soon. You're going to get cut. You're going to actually get cut and you're going to actually get beat, you know. And real, your flesh will be beaten, man. <coughs> I'm gonna, I actually got one, one more precept. This is Psalms 149. I'm going to get straight to the point. Verse five: Let the praises of let the saints be slot. Let the saints be joyful in their in glory. Let them sing up loud upon their beds. Let them praise high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. And that's what we're gonna do: to bind their kings with chains and their 